Today we're going to talk about uh, an AR-15 variant. This particular one has an 11.5 inch barrel and uh, is classified as a short barreled rifle. So this has been registered with the ATF. It's modeled after the Vietnam era commandos, later the GAU. Here you see a moderator, not a compensator, which was uh, put on the end. And uh, this was to reduce flash and noise. And here's the later version of the Colt Commando once you got into uh, the M4 years. Uh, my particular version has a tribute to my first AR ever, that Smith & Wesson stock you see on there. But the rest of this is uh, primarily an upper that uh, uh, was a complete upper by Palmetto State Armory. And the registered lower, uh, which is about six years old, also from Palmetto State Armory. So... Recently in my local gun shop, uh, here's a, a retro recreation that has Colt stampings, but it's not really a Colt. These go for about 2400 bucks, and uh, that uh, moderator you see on there is just a, a pinned and welded extension. It doesn't do anything. So I figured, being that I already have a lower receiver SBR, why not uh, why not do a proof of concept here? So uh, we've got a detachable carry handle. And uh, the rest of this is the M4 type configuration. And uh, my, my thought with this is, let's see how we like it. Now, I don't like on the detachable carry handles these oversized knobs. I get why they are there, but my preference uh, are these uppers that have the permanently affixed rear side carrying handles like this. So we might go that direction at some point, but uh, very basic, very simple setup. It's easy to adjust these. Uh, came pretty well adjusted out of the box, had to do a little bit with uh, the windage, uh, but it's it's straightforward open iron sight shootings for me, guys, and uh, we're looking at, uh, oh, out to about 200 yards is what I'm going to be doing with this setup. Just a quick word to the gear snobs out there. If you're offended by seeing something that didn't cost $2,000 work well, you might want to turn this off. Now, I, I have a registered lower for this SBR. It was 300 blackout and uh, made a decision. I wanted to go to a 5.56, and this is something I always kind of wanted was, was this commando version, the GAU, uh, the CAR-15, something along those lines. And I don't know if I'm finished with this or not. When, when parts and things become available, I very well may go ahead uh, and create a permanent carry handle upper version uh, that is a little bit more of a throwback to a Vietnam era version of these. But when uh, when these came out, they originally had 10 inch barrels. And uh, the reports in the field that came back from the troops was that that was not an effective length of barrel. And they found that the sweet spot tended to be about 11 and a half inches. And that's why I went with this. Uh, it's it what's what they determined is that you really weren't adding much length to it. But in today's ever changing world in which we live in, uh, with uh, the ATF, currently you can get something that looks exactly like this and has maybe even a, a better and more functional uh, uh, adjustable stock called a brace uh, that would not require a tax stamp. And um, also that may change and I believe it's going to change sometime over the next year or so. SBR, short barrel rifle, pistol. Uh, this rifle in, in every respect uh, because I said it was, and I pay $200 to say it was and have it legal. But what you're really talking about is about that much more barrel, and you don't need a tax stamp. But because it's this much barrel, you do. And um, maybe somebody out there in uh, YouTube land can explain to me uh, how this gun becomes so much more dangerous or any at all more dangerous uh, with that difference that it requires uh, registration with the ATF and, 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 and all this paperwork and, and tax revenue going to the, all that stuff. I'm never gonna understand the NFA rules. For example, a silencer suppressor, which is the technical term these days, so I wanna be in vogue, makes it less damaging to your ears. 
makes shooting ranges less of a nuisance to people that might live in the proximity. And yet we need to regulate that because that somehow makes a firearm more deadly. The short barrel rifle, are you kidding me? You must be. Now this has a, a carbine length gas system and with the shorter barrel uh, I expected it to be a little bit more poppy in terms of uh, uh, the recoil and it really wasn't. It's uh, a relatively soft shooting uh, gun which tells me that it's got the right buffer tube and things of that nature working for it. Shooting with uh, just a mil spec trigger and uh, we're, we're doing it old school like I said with the iron sights. And uh, that is my favorite way to shoot a firearm like this. So there's my 100 yard target and it was getting some pretty decent groups. Uh, with these open sights to talk to you about. You saw a higher group here. This is actually 62 grain and this is 55 grain, so go figure. I was getting some decent groups together and then um, somewhere along the line you can see where I hit the top of this beam with a low one and uh, it looks like it just splattered paint. So that's the bullet fragmenting all over God's creation so it's really hard to show you. It does show you what happens when 5.56 five, hits uh, metal at 100 yards. So I still have a uh, little bit of playing around and adjustment to do. Um, gonna have to, to fess up. Uh, it got to be 102 degrees today while we were out shooting, which is unseasonably warm for Minnesota. You know, if you look back just a handful of months, you'll see videos of me outdoor shooting uh, where it's eight below zero. Oh, so we get quite the swing here in this state, but uh, was getting a little bit warm for me to uh, to go through the the drill the patients needed to uh, to fine tune things. But uh, from what I can tell, uh, this barrel is capable of shooting more accurately than I am. And uh, to do a test of absolute accuracy, um, I'd need to take this carry handle off and put on some kind of a, a magnified optic. Uh, and then, you know, shoot off a bench rest and go through all that drill. And that's not really what I use these rifles for. Uh, for me, this rifle uh, is, is something that I love to shoot iron sights. And, uh, and, and, and it ranges where I'm not using magnification. But, you know, the AR being, being such a widely used and popular rifle that it is, comes in many configurations. And there's a lot of guys I know, uh, and, and more and more of them all the time, that are looking for that ultimate accuracy out of an AR. For me personally, uh, I'm looking for minute to man accuracy as well as I'm looking for uh, more than anything else dependability. So this is uh, this is done really well, uh, and uh, uh, having a lot of fun with that. And and who knows, maybe at some point I will go ahead uh, and put together an upper that uh, that that features a built-in carry handle and and goes after that classic style, but. You know, putting on that moderator like I showed you earlier with the GAU, uh, even just putting on something that really does little or nothing, because it certainly doesn't act as a silencer uh, or a suppressor. Uh, even doing that, though, that is uh, that is a Form 1 uh, tax stamp kind of affair. So I'm not real super interested in doing that, and, and I'm probably not going to put together another SBR anytime soon. Until I got a feel for what's going on with the ATF and, and laws 
concerning what is America's, by far, America's favorite rifle. So, but I appreciate you watching today. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, and I hope you enjoyed watching it and had some fun too. This is DR Drake 63. I want to say thanks, as always, for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.